So it's been a while since we started covering Rivian and boy, oh boy, has a lot changed. Prices are way different and there's all kinds of new options available, sort of. We're gonna go through all these new options. We're gonna build out what we think is just the sweetest of sweet spots as far as the build goes. So what's up motorheads and welcome back to Gearbox Pizza, your one-stop shop for all things that go fast and maybe even go boom. So if you're new here, consider tossing us a sub. You won't regret it. Well, you probably won't regret it. I'll, I'll give you that. Anyway, before we start getting into the nitty gritty of all the new prices and options, let's talk some broad strokes real quick. Yep, maybe you're just not totally familiar with Rivian. So how about just like two seconds of backstory and look, believe it or not, Rivian was founded all the way back in 2009 by this mega smart dude named RJ. Anyway, today they're a brand new player in the EV space and they're one of the guys that are actually producing vehicles, off-road vehicles in fact, that you can buy. Yes, this is not vaporware, these are real and you can get one. So right now there are two models officially in the works. You got the R1T, which is the full electric truck, which we'll be checking out big time in this video. And then there's the R1S, the big boy SUV that's not quite out yet, but it'll be out soon. And we're gonna be getting into that thing in the future video, so don't worry. Now, you may not have seen many or even any of these on the road just yet. And that's in part because, well, just about every automaker these days, yeah, Rivian, as well, and everybody's just behind in production. I mean, look, they were originally aiming to produce 50,000 units in 2022, but right now that's been cut in half, yep, from 50,000 to a hopeful 25,000 units. Now, it's not really their fault, it's just about everybody's behind schedule, you know, chip shortage, crazy insane dictator, yeah. All right, so let's talk about price. So Rivian recently jacked up the price across the board by about 20%, and man, oh man, did that ruffle some feathers, and understandably so. Imagine you plopped down a deposit a year or two ago, and boom, just before your fly set of wheels is set to go into production, Hey, this is gonna cost you thousands of dollars more than we told you it would. What? Yeah, this did not go over well and Rivian walked back this awful idea, sort of. So at least they're doing the right thing and honoring those fellows who've been waiting in line patiently for almost ever. You guys are fine. All right, so along with this new quote unquote pricing structure, Rivian is now offering a downspec dual motor configuration and to go along with that, yep, there's a new smaller and cheaper battery. What's sort of funny though is that now and after the price hike, you can still get that R1T for about the same price, but now you get two fewer motors and about 60 miles less range. All right, so enough small talk. What do you say we fire up that configurator and just get down to brass tacks? So here we are. And the first option here is between the Explore Pack and the Adventure Pack. The Adventure Pack is going to cost you about an extra 5,500 bucks, right? So. What do you get for all that extra cheddar? Well, you get this gear guard security cable, which is a braided steel cable that's covered with a nylon jacket that's said to be very resistant to cutting. The two ends of the cable is attached to two plugs inside the truck bed, so when the truck is locked, the cable is locked, so no need for another key or combination thing. You also get this dual front bumper tow hooks. Yep, all right, that's cool. You get an upgraded stereo system by Meridian, Ashwood interior finishes, perforated, heated, and ventilated seats with lumbar adjustments for both the front seats, and finally, you get some compass yellow interior accents. All right. So there's some nice stuff here. Not sure if it warrants an extra 5,500 bucks, but look, I wouldn't blame you if you just skip this auction pack altogether, but I, I'm not, look, I'm willing to guess that the take rate on this thing is gonna be pretty high, so we're gonna take it as well. All right, next up, we're looking at motors. All right, and look, this is brand new. Yep, a dual motor option. Now, I was really thinking there'd be a little bit more savings here by dropping down to the entry level power, but the Delta here, it's only six grand, which, look, really isn't that much when you're looking at dropping between like 80 and 100 grand. Now, you do still get all wheel drive as the layout is one motor per axle, although the reality is, is that the all wheel drive in the quad motor version is just going to be better. I mean, I don't think, you can overcome physics with smart programming just yet, but then again, you know, what, what do I know? The next thing you'll notice is that the power is down, obviously, but it is still a very, very fast truck. Check it out. Zero to 60 is still stupid fast for a truck at four seconds, but like not as fast, obviously, as just the ridiculously quick quad motor version that can out-accelerate plenty of supercars. Yeah, three seconds to the 60. 
That's fast. Power wise, we're down from 800 horsepower to 600 horsepower, and torque is down from 900 pound feet to 600 pound feet. But hey, look, 600 horsepower, that's still so much horsepower. It's just not right to say, quote unquote, only 600 horsepower. Uh uh, no way. The reality is that the dual motor version is already faster than you need, but I suspect with the difference of only six grand. I think just most people are gonna opt for the quad motors, even though they just really don't need it. I mean, no one really needs that much power. Well, I, mean, I guess most people don't, but seriously, I mean, who doesn't want more power? So we're gonna go for it. All right, the next big option is, yep, it's the battery. And what's brand new here is we've got three options to choose from, kind of. And I say kind of, because if you opt for the big boy quad motor option, you can't try to save a little coin by going with the little battery. Mm -mm. Now, I really shouldn't say little, as it's still good for 260 miles of range, which is solid, but for an extra six grand, you can, uh, you can get that large pack that bumps the range up to 314 miles. That's nice, but if you really have some deep pockets or you seriously need all the range you can get regardless of price, well, Rivian will happily sell you an even bigger battery they call the Max Pack for an additional $10,000. This bumps the range to a seriously awesome 400 plus miles and that's amazing. Now, I don't think most people are gonna go for the big, big, big battery. I mean, 314 miles is plenty of range for almost anyone, including us, so we're gonna stick with the large pack here and save a little coin. Oh, one thing to mention, for both the dual motor and small battery pack, well, they won't be available until 2024. So that's something to consider if you're looking to pull the trigger on one of these things like right away. Although, look, the reality is it may be 2024 before you can get your hands on anything from Rivian, regardless of spec, but hey, maybe this whole supply constraint thing will be figured out i don't know it could happen right it could all right so it's time to pick some paint and i believe pricing here may have changed a bit also i could be wrong but i think these are a little bit more expensive than they used to be uh, look at least you get a solid no cost option as the silver is free and it's pretty nice for an extra $1,750, you can choose between white, limestone, and forest green. Then if you're still looking to drop some more coin, there's several $2,500 options. You can get red, black, blue, dark gray, or what they're calling L cap granite, and yellow. I don't know, I'm just sort of feeling a little bit neutral. Why not save a little bit of coin? So we're just, we'll just go for the silver. All right. All right, moving on to the wheels. Well, wheels and tires. So standard, you get some pretty nice looking 21s with that road rubber on them. And yeah, it's a pretty, that's a pretty good starting point, honestly. Your first real choice though is, hey, you want some road rubber? You want some off-road rubber? If you're looking for the off-road option, well, you get three options. All of them are sitting on just slightly smaller wheels at 20 inches, but those tires are pretty beefy. You get your choice between two silver styles for an extra 2,500, or you get the black versions for an extra 3,500. So the story is similar with the other optional road wheels with a pair of 22s to choose from. The silver version is gonna be an extra 2,500 bucks, while the black version, yep, an extra 3,500 bucks. And hey, look, a little tip. If you're in the black wheels, consider like saving yourself a grand and just pick up some wheel paint for like 30 bucks on Amazon. It works and it works well. I've got some not so bright pals that did just that. And if they can do it, trust me, you can do it. All right, personally, I probably wouldn't be doing much off-roading and I'm sort of just digging these tastefully large wheels. So I'll go with the 22s, the silver ones. And if I want them black, I'll just paint them myself. I mean, what could go wrong, right? Okay, what do you say we head on to the inside? And we've got three options here. And again, I feel like the pricing may have changed here a bit as well. <sighs> Maybe, anyway, there's three options. You got the Black Mountain at no additional cost, but the Ocean Coast, AKA gray, and the Forest Edge, AKA green, well, they're both an extra two grand. I don't know, look, pick what you want here. Personally, I've had light colored leather before and I just won't do it again. It just like picks up color too easily. I mean, do you wear jeans a lot? Yeah, well, I would just completely skip the gray, trust me. Now, there's something pretty cool about the green, but I don't know, colorful interiors never really seem to age all that well. I mean, I don't know, it is pretty cool though. Uh, I think, look, I just think we'll keep it simple and stick with the black, but you do you here. All good, no judgment. All right, next up, we've got some adventure gear to look at, and there is a bunch of stuff here. And 
Look, I'm not gonna go through everything, but there's a few pretty interesting things here that I bet most people actually consider. First thing is this mega trick camp kitchen. I mean, check this thing out, yep. It is super unique and very cool. Between this and the tent, you may actually want to go camping. Anyway, this kitchen slides right out of the truck and yeah, it's cool, but it's also a $7,000 option. But if you're into this kind of stuff, then look, there's really nothing else quite like it on the market. Then there's this tent that stows right on the bed and keeps you off the ground. Yeah, it's pretty trick but it's also a $3,000 option. So between this and the stove, you're looking at about 10 grand in sweet camping accessories. Yep. Is it cool? Yeah, it's very cool. Is it $10,000 cool? I don't know, to some people probably, I don't know. Look, if you camp, boom, you're, you're all hooked up. Here you go. All right, so the last option we're looking at are the lockable tenu covers. So I'm a little surprised that this doesn't come as standard. I mean, at least the manual one should be standard on a $90,000 truck, right? Anyway, the manual version is an extra 1800 bucks, and the one you'll actually get, the powered one, it's three grand. So I don't know how you don't get it. So yeah, we'll get it. All right, so where are we at? So we're looking at about 90 grand, give or take, depending on your whole Tanu cover that you'd like. I don't know. It's a lot of money, but it's also a lot of truck. I don't know, look, if you can afford it and you're looking for an electric truck, this might just be your best overall bet, assuming you can actually get your hands on one. Okay, one other thing worth mentioning if you're seriously looking at Rivian for your next vehicle is their charging network. So like how Tesla has their proprietary supercharger network, Rivian's building out their very own high-speed charging network, which is awesome. I mean, I can't understate just how crappy the public DC charging networks are. I mean, there's the supercharger network, and then there's the cesspool of broken and crappy chargers that hardly work whatsoever. Peace of mind when it comes to charging is worth something. That's all I'm saying. So there we have it. The new, new Rivian R1T, complete with higher pricing and more options. What do you think? Did we get our build right? What did we miss? What did we mess up? Let me know in the comments. Bottom line, I still think Rivian is a very solid and worthy competitor in the space. I absolutely loved it at the old price. Yeah, these price hikes hurt, but if you can afford it and you're looking to switch to electric, well, I think you could you could do so much worse than picking up a Rivian, assuming you can actually find one to buy. 